the averages. You're going to see all these, uh, the temperatures about 2 degrees below normal. So from um, anywhere from D.C. all the way west into Chicago and Minneapolis, even into areas of Florida, you're going to see temperatures about 2 degrees below average. And then if you head off into the west, um, around average conditions. So if you have cold, which is a kind of an indication, there's your trough, there's your storm track. Storms come through here, it's colder than average. Right here, the coming the coast, strong precipitation here. You go farther to the west because the storms are on, along the coast. Most precipitation is along the coast. Farther the west you go, the less precipitation you might get. So um, that's what it appears like it's going to be according to the I'll number the models that we've seen, and I'll number the conditions we're seeing set up now. So, next we're going to look up here at the pattern. And this is something that I pointed out um, in a blog post earlier um, in the month of May um, that I thought was very interesting over the past year, 12 years. If you just take the past 12 years and look at the El Nino's and the La Nina's and the neutral conditions. 2001, 2002, we're going from a La Nina to neutral. Yeah, 3 points of inches of snow, 2.3, 2.6, 4.0 inches of snow from Baltimore to Philadelphia, respectively. Um, but look at the El Nino year. Yeah, 40 inches of snow, and um, yeah, 40 inches of snow up here in uh, Washington, 58.1, and Baltimore, 50.1, and Dulles, 46.3, and Philadelphia. The point here, you went from a La Nina. To, uh, slash neutral conditions to uh, El Nino the following year of those having those very very low snow totals next year we had very far very above average snow, snowfall totals so tap, capped off by the President's Day snowstorm of, of 2003 February 2003 look at the pattern again 2008-2009 lower below, below, below average snowfall totals with a La Nina conditions um, can um, existing the very following year, record-breaking snowfall, 56.1 inches in Washington, 77 point inches in Baltimore, 73.2, Dulles, 71.6 in Philadelphia, um, where we had snow Megadon in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, and even the Southeast in late February, January got in on a, a lot of this action. So, and once again, the interior. Pennsylvania, uh, the Appalachian Mountains, areas like that missed out. A lot of those areas, including the Ohio Valley, upstate New York, a lot of those areas missed out because of that storm track being farther off to the east um, and up and along the coast, as is in the typical El Nino year. However, we don't see the conditions for another 2009-2010 episode to happen. Those are kind of historic numbers. You might want to look more towards the uh, 2000, uh, you want, might want to look more towards the 2002-2003 year for how this year might end up. Uh, so we're going to go on 2012, now, oh, one more thing before we move on here to my outlooks. Uh, one more thing here real quick, 2011-2011, two inches of snow in Baltimore and Washington. Um, and a number of these areas received below, much below average in snowfall totals under a La Nina year. The following year, it looks like an El Nino is coming. Could history repeat itself and have a 2002-2003 winter or a 2009-2010 winter? That's what it, I, 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 it, the last 12 years serves as a record. Um, two back-to-back -back snow, snowless winters don't happen back-to-back -back over the past 12 years. Let's see if that trend continues, and if we, I believe we'll have more of a 2002-2003 winter once again. Uh, so here's my forecast. If you look uh, towards the uh, eastern half of the nation, colder and snowier, than, colder than average. In the eastern half of the nation, pretty much as typically is, much colder than average. You head off into areas of the uh, Great Lakes and Wisconsin. Slightly above average temperatures in South and, and um, California and um, Pacific Southwest. Average conditions pretty much in the West and into Texas and into Florida. Um, one to two degrees colder than the average and the colder than average. Two to four degrees below average in the Great Lakes and one to two degrees above average 
around Southern California. And when you put it all together, here's what I believe. Don't please, no snowfall. Questions how much snow you'll get in your area. That won't be out till November. So, and the storm track maps won't be out till November. I think November. I might do them a little earlier if all the patterns come up, but I will let you know in my next update on September 1st. Okay? So, bitter cold with snow, some snow, mainly clippers. And I say mainly clippers because I don't believe we'll have. Apple, uh, Appalachian cutters are um, an apt runner when it comes to storms. The storms that come up, start in Texas, and work their way up, which brings a lot of warm air, icy scenarios over here in the where it's this cold and snowy this year, and that usually brings snow over here, and, or storms that just come way up into the Great Lakes cutters um, and bring areas like this snow. I believe you'll just deal with um, a clipper system that comes from. Um, Alberta, Canada, they're usually very weak. Drop, drop most of the snow about three to six inch band of snow that comes out about right here. They weaken by the time they get over here. But I think most of this area will be dealing with mainly clippers. You might have a one apps cut, cutter or uh, one um, Great Lakes cutter, but I don't think it will be the feature of this year. If you, if you live around the Great Lakes, somebody acts it earlier, you'll still get your lake effect snow, especially as storm systems come up the coast, bomb out pull in that colder air, northwesterly winds, you'll have that snow coming down um, from your lake effect snow. So that's going to remain the same. More mixed storms than snowstorms if you live around Oklahoma, Nevada, northwestern Texas, which means that you'll have more slop storms, snow, rain, and back to snow. I don't see, maybe around average snowfall conditions, you might be a little above average. It's too early to call on that right now. We'll take another look at that in September, around average in the Pacific Northwest in the west, warmer and drier than average in the Pacific Southwest. Icy and wetter than average as you head off into Dallas, uh, northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, southeastern areas of t Tennessee, southwestern areas of uh, South Carolina. Maybe head along, right along the coast, wetter than average conditions. Cold and snowy if you head off into Raleigh, uh, Richmond, D.C., Baltimore, uh, Philadelphia, New York City, uh, Boston, and then to areas of Maine, cold and, cold and snowy as we deal with the storm systems dragging in this cold air. So uh, that's what I believe will happen this winter. Um, any questions, once again, uh, leave them, in the, leave them um, down here on the bottom of, the, of this page. I mean, of this post, and I will try to answer them. And once again, I'm, I will let you know tomorrow if I'm able to do a Twitter chat. From it probably won't be will be sometime in the evening around nine to nine thirty, something like that. And we'll, I will answer some of your weather winter weather questions. It won't. I won't answer snow, snow. How much snow in your area? Um, but what you, what your area will be like snow? If it will be cold or warm? I'll answer those type of questions. I'll try to answer those tomorrow. So, this is forecaster Dante with Brown Wolf from the Weather Master Jackson Center. We, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you keep checking back as we try to get this winter forecast nailed down. All right.